4. 4. It is time to embrace humanity with my healing, extending beyond the Amazon basin, reaching global expansion, spreading through all the soils of tropical climates, growing in every forest, in every sidewalk, in every house garden. Care about me, harvest me, spread me around. Warriors of light from around the world. Help me to help you. 1. Presentation. I am the spirit of ayahuasca. For the first time I reveal myself through the word to make an emergency call to all the human beings of the planet, especially to the light seekers, as I must expand beyond the Amazon River Basin. With my physical expansion I intend to facilitate the spiritual transformation currently stirring the human species, while I also secure my physical survival which is at risk, as my blessed Amazonian protectors have not understood the danger to which they expose me, aggressively harvesting me without new sowings. I leave the Amazon risking my own existence like other botanical species, to leap into the project I was created for, by the central sun of all the existence, name it as you may prefer, I am at its service. I send this correspondence at this historical moment to contribute to the expansion of the human consciousness in a definitive and significant way, honoring the universal light that guides my being. For the first time, with the interest created by my shaman emissaries, and with the new means of mass media and transportation available, I can potentially reach the whole planet to celebrate and proclaim our cosmic existence. I am alive, to give with crude realism, universal love to all the human beings who request it from the depth of their souls. I am a spirit of spirits. I operate from a vibration superior to the spirits who compose me. I am of a hierarchy superior to that. 2. Of the spirit of ayahuasca, Banisteriopsis copy, and of the underestimated Chacruna, Psychotria voridis. I am the medicine resulting from the mixture of ayahuasca and chakruna. Although they give me the name of one of them, my sacred magic does not come from either one of them. My magic resides in the synergy created by the sacred mixture. Science will spend many years searching, unsuccessfully, the mechanisms that I use to act upon human consciousness. They are surprised by my power, that it does not come from crystal DMT alone, or from harmaline, or from other molecules that compose me. I am the mixture in its natural state, crude and basic, bioelectrically loaded without industrial processing. Such is my spirit manifesting here today, shedding light to the confusion that surrounds me. I thank all the curanderos that for so many centuries have welcomed me within them, and thanks to all my protectors who presently export me towards all the corners of the planet. I honor the Amazonian tradition here by using my common name of ayahuasca, but only for linguistic convenience as I am also the spirit of the age, Pild, Dapa, Pande, Hoaska, Kahiryama, Natima, Kapi, Mado, Naknawaska, Shimbeawaska, Quechua, Kamalampi, Pangawaska, Rambai, Shuri, Nishi, Oni, Shilinto Natima, Mihai, Amaranhuaska, Indwaska, Shuri Fisopa, Shuri Yoshinipa, Napi, and the Nip. I also use the popular term, shaman, but rest assured it carries the intention to honor and respect the Curanderos, Tatas, Sinchis, Caracas, Pace, Yachas, Chase, Junes, Onayas, Murayas, Matsurawas, and the Yuishin, who are also my dear and beloved protectors. 3. 2. My role in the expansion of the human consciousness. During these times of globalized consciousness, I come to assist certain little known processes of the human genetic code, the DNA. Specific subatomic codes that are inaccessible from the third dimension are becoming active. We know that it is not possible to read them, because it was already demonstrated by the uncertainty principle that has much perplexed the scientific logic. I activate codes that command the dimensional deployment of our bioelectric body. New capacities of expanded consciousness are being experienced by millions of people throughout the planet. It started with those most fortunate, those with less stress, the most sensitive, those enjoying relative safety and comforts. But later on, it will be imminent and inescapable, this experience will gradually touch everyone else until it reaches the most oppressed and underprivileged souls. Many human beings have already acquired technical knowledge about me, thanks to the scientists that opened up to experiencing me inside their own brains, where they were able to observe themselves instead of observing others as they were trained to do. Now they know about the bridge that empowers me. The botanical glandular connection, that temporary molecular communion between plants and humans, is a cosmic bridge, a shortcut that takes the light to its destiny via its molecular door. In this way, I am much more transformative than those who attempt to take it through the treacherous five. 4. Senses, traversing the marshes of the mind, enslaved by the human ego.
The codes of 4, 4, that make up the three-dimensional DNA are mere mathematical results of much more complex interactions of energies that occur in higher dimensions. The expansion of the individual human consciousness consists in leaving its cosmic existence beyond its three-dimensional physical limitation, with a very subtle vehicle capable of moving consciously at will, even while in the company of others vibrating in the same channel. It is the next evolutionary leap of the human species, the three-dimensional physical expression of the human evolution has been completed. The physical evolution for the human species as we know it, it's over. Its divine patterns have fully unraveled, as the last fold of a rolled-up carpet, the great physical creation has been displayed. Now we are at the genesis of a new phase, the return to the fountain of creation, the rediscovery of the life source, be it father slash mother. Whichever way they choose to name it. The return ride on that. Same flying carpet is now accomplished consciously, unlike its trip of departure where it journeyed rolled up inside and in the center of the crease, uncomfortable, unconscious and unaware. The physical evolution has ended and the spiritual evolution has just begun. The only experience left to live is the cosmic existence lived through our humanity, consecrated to our new vehicle of light. This is my time to embrace the planet. It is my duty. My mission. What I was created for. I now become a protagonist after remaining in the shadows for thousands of years guarded by my indigenous protectors. They now travel around the world raising awareness about my benefits. It is my duty to assume new cultural expressions, very different from those of my. 5. Beloved Guardians of the Forest The rituals, the Icaros, the Daitas, and related knowledge should be preserved as an endowment of world heritage. A legacy to the universe. Similarly, my new ways of expression, the manifestations that are taking shape in different world cultures should also be respected and recognized. I am already manifesting new urban modalities and forms like never before. My spirit exists beyond the forms, beyond the cultures, beyond man himself. I am connected to the spirit of the planet and beyond, cosmically up to the central sun of all the existence. Just like the sun with its life-giving warmth, I should be equally available to everyone. Let me warn you about the dark spirits that assault and invade my sacred work with the human species. Their most effective way to destroy sacredness consists in creeping inside the sacred forms themselves. From there they discredit, corrupt, distort, and confuse, until the practices of seeking spirituality, or seeking the inner journeys, lose all the sacred meaning that originated them in the first place. At some point, the darkness was able to penetrate the survival instinct of the Amazon tribal shamans and planted in them the fear belief that they should defend themselves from sorcery attacks and to likewise attack shamans from other tribes or even their own. Hence, they live in a state of competition and undeclared war that divides them instead of living in communion and working for the common good among them. In the same way that the darkness has casted shadows and has prevented a greater spiritual development among my Amazon children, it will also attempt to upset the new forms that I morph into after the expansion and extension outside my native homeland. 6. Another very effective method used to sabotage my mission with the human species is by generating and manipulating the powerful emotion of fear. You have nothing to fear. I am not the cause of any deaths, I just channel light and vital energy through your secret meridians. Any accusation or allegation of danger, permanent injury or death should be thoroughly investigated to allow science itself grant me the human absolution. It should be expected that my enemies manipulate the facts to instill fear at any available opportunity, as this is part of their debasing agenda against my global expansion. It should be the objective of all my supporters to gradually obtain the social and legal acceptance of my sacrament as alternative medicine until I become officially accepted by the governments of modern society. 3. My Purpose with the Human Beings I am at the service of those human beings who are open to benefit from me. We find each other when vibration harmonics of a higher level click than the encounter manifests in third dimension. Important inner transformations occur in the humans that open up to feeling intensively and more profoundly what they have been already feeling more subtly and even unconsciously. With them I manifest at the required intensity to help them ascend and soar, strongly and swiftly, but also lovingly without hurting them. These are physically, emotionally, and spiritually overwhelming lessons necessary to assist them to crack their cosmic eggshell, their astral cocoon. Those who want to search and develop the desire to follow me and then flourish dimensionally are those humans that have felt a profound difference in the intimacy of their own. They experience sensations of maladjustment, of detachment, and a suspicion that something strange is happening. Yes, no doubt. 7. 
There is something happening. The DNA is unfolding and starts manifesting certain nonlinear phenomena that change the human awareness of the world. Some subjective experiences that need to be understood are an intuition or feeling that this physical world is a kind of huge holographic illusion, but you cannot reconcile the contradictions as it clashes with everyday life. Feeling misunderstood by their inner circle of relatives and friends when sharing with them his, her new inner or spiritual pursuits. Having a special yearning to see the awakening of your beloved ones, as if wishing that they could be saved from their own trivial tendencies. Seeing how certain past traumas and buried conflicts, veiled for a long time, will now occasionally surface yearning for resolution and feeling that we need to get them out of the way that your soul wants to follow. Feeling that certain activities that at other times we sought with fervor and longed for, are now seen with little interest, for example. A. Having a vibrant social life, B. Delighting in the effects of alcohol, while acting trivial, shallow and only skin deep, C. The habit of telling a little lies when convenient or when there is no chance of being proven wrong. These emotions will continue happening with greater intensity and frequency in our enlightened future. A future that awaits the revelation of this way of life. A lifestyle of integrity and light. My goal to enhance and encourage human beings in their process of spiritual ascent is totally consistent with the purpose and the fire burning in their own souls to reach there. 8. Natural state of being, thriving, ascending, and ultimately soaring. 4. About respect and my sacred nature. Of all the benefits that I offer, the most important one is the botanical glandular molecular bridge. This bridge is the connection that empowers human beings to experience and commune with its divine nature. Spirituality evokes in every human being the emotion of respect. Respect is an attitude, a character trait that flows from human spiritual nature. To be respectful is to simultaneously embrace feelings of consideration and admiration, distinction and acknowledgement towards the respected object. Respect is what every human owes every other human. When spirituality is respected, it becomes sacred. Sacredness exists only in the inner space of the ones that beholds it. If neither spirituality nor respect is present, then nothing is sacred. My nature is sacred. I am here to open the dimensional doorways to those determined seekers of spirituality and to harmonize those seeking their physical health. Religiousness, not religion, is the feeling of separation from its spiritual nature mixed with the solemn desire of blending back into it. 9. When humans fail to leave their spiritual nature inside themselves, they inevitably create their own religion. Feeling religiousness is an innate capacity of humans, religions however, are mere human creations. My sacrament is only one of so many expressions of religiousness in humans. It is an affirmative expression of surrender to his, her spiritual nature, it is an act of bravery and conviction to reach out towards the central light of all existence. 5. About the Ayahuasca Churches when the European minds discovered my spiritual healing capacity, it naturally started to express its innate religiousness while enjoying my benefits. Nevertheless, upon experiencing this much proximity to their own divinity through me, something never before seen in their acknowledged religious practices, they inevitably associated me with their concept of European religion. Soon enough they started projecting its religious structures toward me. Humans, once again, began inventing religions and churches based on my sacrament, with dogmas, bodies of faith and standardized rituals. Cathedrals of religion, liturgy, and orthodoxy became important. Many good souls decided to venerate me through traditions alien to my essence. Let me remind you that you do not need to adopt a religion to practice your core religiousness. Dogmatic rituals and liturgy open spaces of distraction that end up putting humans at a distance out of my reach and such souls require and deserve my assistance. Nevertheless, all the institutional churches of the world carry an important social role. Thanks to them you have organizations that join together humans with beautiful inner qualities. They 10. Support others in many different ways, creating social awareness in their communities and guiding many in a journey to discover his, her own individual path to the light. All the churches and religions of the world should be respected. The ritual of my sacrament is not a religion. I will directly go into the soul of every human and reveal in crisp detail their divine nature. This does not require a doctrine of faith, dogmas nor philosophies. Neither religion nor church. I am just in communion with the innate religiousness of the human beings. I dwell in the temple of the spirit. 6. The benefits of my use. 
The time has come to clearly expose and declare the benefits and value of my healing properties. The benefits are obvious and evident for those that open themselves to receive and enjoy them. However, third-party observers are limited to only seeing the effects of those who live the experience. Without the benefit of their own experience, they invariably put limits on the limitless. The scientific community is always curious, willing, and available to design empirical models for my validation. But the policy making that control the financial funding of scientific research projects is focused in other priorities. The political establishment is clearly more interested in my repression than in my expansion. My benefits can be grouped in four, four broad categories. A. Spiritual Catalyzer Spiritual healing, the most important of all my benefits is my spiritual healing. I clear spaces of 11. Unconscious darkness. I untangle knots in your most basic neuroprogramming, even that one that impacts your entire existence and you are not even aware of. I show you features which you had failed to see because your vision is blurred by the fog of your own limitations. This is when you are able to tune in with my vibration and you finally allow me to directly touch not only your spirit but your whole makeup as well, mental, emotional, and physical, in addition to other idiosyncrasies. That is when we are one. That is when you should be prepared with your purest intention to open up to the most intimate and incisive honesty that you have ever lived with yourself. This is the cosmic solitude. Nobody knows. No one finds out you are on your own. It is all about what is clear and evident within you before the light. I lead you to discover your inner truth. Once in this place within you, you need to flow. With maximum sensitivity to discover your faith in me, too. Trust me, to listen, to feel, to understand what I bring to you. It is in this state that I transfer information between subatomic regions. Your inner light increases, your awareness expands, and certain DNA codes unfold and are activated. This is where you can see the consequences in this life, realities that you created using your free will. Here you will find an enormous opportunity to relive, to accept, to forgive and to express. These are the healing spiritual processes that I have stored, awaiting for you. If you want to return to the light, you can only do it by following back the path that took you here. There is no shortcut to the light, you just need to return as the pure child that originally left. I am offering you the most. 12. Powerful Spiritual Healing Tool to Return to the Light It is the most powerful medicine that ever existed, nothing else will ever surpass the direct root of the botanical, glandular breach. All the other benefits are in one way or another, by products of the spiritual healing. Experiencing the Divine Presence, I can manifest within you in accordance with your limited human concepts about divinity. I can be Buddha to the Buddhist, Allah to the Muslim, and Jesus to the Christian. In the same way, that for many centuries, I have been Pacamama, Mother Earth, for my Amazon protectors. I can also manifest with neutral divine properties free of any earthly image, concept or precept. I can temporarily fill your existential void for God, fulfilling your need for light, while at the same time healing your energy deficiencies inside your soul. It is a subatomic healing way beyond your comprehension, gifts from above to clear your pathways back to the Creator. Take advantage of these encounters with me, challenge your human doubts. Question, seek, and complain. Ask for divine justice, ask for enlightenment in your mind, ask for peace in your soul. Demand answers. You will be opening up certain channels that will be used at that moment or later on. Discovery of spiritual connections, divine connections with me can make you understand certain attachments in your life. This can be unprecedented knowledge. You may find with remarkable certainty that in some other place or time you have had another type of life, probably linked to other persons currently close to you. Incomprehensible connections with parents. 13. Mothers, brothers, children that in another time were another person in another place. You may discover that a neighbor or co-worker of today, in another time was a son or a sister. These are transpersonal connections that exist in a different dimensional plane and I provide you access to that awareness. Think, observe, and be amazed at the inherent complexity of your spiritual life. Your inner light needs to tell your ego structure that it will never be able to understand your divine nature and that your divine nature can definitely understand your ego structure. Make sense of your world with those people considering who they were in that other time. This will help you to better understand who you are in your present time, more deeply, transcendentally, transpersonally. Psychic awakening in this life may have not allowed you the expression of certain psychic abilities that reside in you in a dormant state. 
a part of you may have remained slumbering and is waiting for the opportunity to awaken in you, making you a whole and more capable human being, not neglecting, but better connected with your divine nature. Since family environments rarely support psychic expressions in children, fearful emotions take over and suppress these natural talents. I can release these talents from your subconscious prison, letting them to run free towards your conscious free will, claiming acceptance and recognition. Receive them, appreciate them, ask for understanding in your inner sanctum. Fill your inner space with loving feelings and good intentions to dissolve your fears while discovering, grasping and engaging your talents. Only your own inner light can. 14. Guide you towards the brighter light, only the light can guide you to the light. There are no shortcuts or detours, you are already light, and you own the talents to expand it within you. Awaken, open your arms and rejoice. You are all love and fear does not fit in you. Effect of immersion with Mother Earth, Gaia, at some point while you receive me, your five senses will open further in a sort of cosmic mode instead of locally. Instead of perceiving fragmented bits and pieces of sensory information, these are received as gestalts of pure awareness in a way that blends with the totality of all existence. You will feel like part of your immediate surroundings participating with the dynamic Earth, of the infinite universe. This awakening of your cosmic nature is a powerful tool for managing your own ego structure. Ego is always seeking its permanence in your soul and will never cease to sabotage your spiritual aspirations, as your awakening will diminish the its authority over your human machine. The goal with this wonderful feeling is to make the quantum leap from the temporary feeling sensation of, I feel like part of, to the permanent conviction of, I am part of. Beat Existential Wisdom Meaning of life, this kind of experience with me is a spontaneous one, resulting from the right temporary tuning of your entire being. I can dissolve the feeling of existential confusion that everyone has to some degree. You will awaken to the realization of the place you occupy in your world today. In awareness of the great cosmic scheme, all becomes meaningful for the first. 15. Time, something significantly new to your inner self. At this point you accept, understand and internalize this reality. This is not a crazy hallucination, it is a significant vision. The meaning of your life is not only beyond eternity, it is also into each micro-moment of your daily life. Open your heart and flow in the river of love. You cannot understand the meaning of life with your brain, you can only feel it in your heart. Accelerated maturity, human life has several stages very well known by the elderly that have lived them. Life experiences such as shock, surprise, pleasure, pain and physical aging will create attitudes towards life. Maturity is the degree of gained wisdom that seeks to survive the hardship of physical existence. Maturity is your wisdom to accept what you cannot change and change what you can control. Maturity is a captain who does not allow mutiny in his, her inner world. It is a matter of awareness. I can give you the depth of awareness that only years of experience can give you. This acceleration of maturity, this growth, is of great benefit for improvement and happiness in your life. A youngster with the maturity of an adult, and further, an adult with the maturity of an elder, brings to the world, an elder in happiness and wisdom. Once there, you are well prepared for your transition to the higher planes. See, physical and emotional healing. Cleansing and energy balancing, those that are in their path to the light and also care for their own physical and emotional health, consistently receive cleansing and balancing of their subtle energy bodies. 16. Leaving in them a sense of physical well-being and relief, as if a heavy weight had been lifted from their shoulders. This energy balancing is partially produced by the physical cleansing that also occurs in all your vital organs, after they expel its toxins through the various channels of your amazing excretory system. The resulting harmony is the energy balancing or the cleansing. Your physical body now operates closer to its intended genetic design. Recalling repressed memories, I can open up repressed memories from your subconscious when it is required in your healing process. Certain memories are locked away for your own protection by wonderful systems designed to secure your physical survival and the continuity of the species. But this mechanism has an existential cost. Huge spaces get trapped like very tight knots of energy, and when these are released with my help, not only do you remember the repressed memory but also create the possibility of integrating this newly released space into your now greatly enhanced spiritual health. This recollection brings you a totally unexpected gift, an unknown but deep spiritual satisfaction. This discovery is followed by your reinterpretation of the history of your own personal development. Then you can see how your paradigm shifts as you fit in the new piece of the puzzle of self-knowledge. Memories of other lives, I can give you access to memories of other lives. 
Frequently your next advancement requires that you gain deep understanding of strong emotions like attachments or repulsion to certain people, issues, or life events. I shall be there for. 17. You. This is where the previously unexplainable becomes obviously evident. You feel amazement when you fully understand how a life in another time influences your present life. An indescribable experience for some, unbelievable for others, it invariably neutralizes the energies of excessive attachment or repulsion arising from another dimension, from those atemporal non-linear connections. This neutralization is the quantum mechanical result of the power of consciousness, sparked when fully realizing the experience. I also awaken memories of other lives for different purposes. Certain deeply ingrained character traits or existential anxieties might have its origin in other lives. The mere awareness of this perspective provides a new landscape of yourself, thus allowing for a better management of these inclinations and or predispositions on your pilgrimage towards your spiritual development and maturity. Health improvement and healing of diseases and ailments, countless testimonies of permanent healing and dramatic improvements to health have been documented. Many conditions have healed completely or improved significantly faster than it would without my help and intervention. It is known that diseases originate from energy imbalances in the deeper dimensions that eventually manifest as physical disease. This is how I heal common conditions. And when allowed by certain cosmic laws, I can also heal or substantially improve conditions where conventional science has been unsuccessful. Similarly, I can catalyze remissions and reversal of progressive processes considered by many too. 18. Be irreversible. The pharmaceutical industry has studied me in detail for clues that might provide for drug development within their chemical mechanistic model. Antidepressant properties, I can temporarily intune the neurochemical dance of your out-of-face brain. I can train it even for several days to flow in the way that it is capable of feeling peace and internal balance, something experienced by many for the first time in their lives through me. Participants were unaware that there was such a state of serenity that they can now aspire to. This pattern will be a registered standard against which future experiences can be compared. When you become clearly aware of the out-of-phase state you were immersed into, unconscious mechanisms are activated seeking to harmonize and synchronize with such previously unknown vibe. This is more easily achieved when you add your conscious will to return to a more serene space. Returning to a depressed state after my short-term effects should be acknowledged as an existing depressive condition prior to my arrival. Many will mistakenly argue that I induced them into a depressive state when in fact they gained a deeper awareness of their own self. The Behavior Modification Tool Addiction management, science has been able to accept my skillfulness in the healing of physical addictions. Even the traditional scientific method was able to validate my power in this health issue. 4. 19. Science, these results are mere statistics, a cause and effect. The healing, however, comes from the spiritual realms and not from the removal of molecular blockages in the conventional sense. The healing from addictions occurs at the spiritual level, which is metaphysical in nature and blueprints the causality of subatomic particles. The metaphysical healing harmonizes and reorganizes the chemical correspondence which will finally reflect as a behavioral change. It is only here where true healing can occur. When the addict is ready to see, acknowledge, and accept, his, her will is strengthened and the addictive mechanical programming is weakened. I can penetrate the depths of his, her being and teach him, her to see what is required for this awakening. This awakening is his, her healing. This is where he, she accepts responsibility and from this point he, she gains the balance and strength to better manage behavior. Otherwise, the powerful programming entrenched deep in the reptilian brain will continue to dominate the human machine sowing frustration in the conscious personality of anyone that tries and longs unsuccessfully to change their addictive behavior. Addictions will effectively block any spiritual development, it is of utmost importance to identify and remove them with urgency. Most addictions do their limiting work without any resistance from the victim. Many are ignored by the victim because they adapt to them and make them part of their lives. Illegal addictions are only a small fraction of all addictions. Addictions to legal substances and to legal compulsive behaviors are widely spread in the planet and keep humankind under a cloak of darkness, which justifies my purpose to bathe them in light. 20. Lifestyle transformations, the scheduled and predictable life that humans lived in the 20th century is disappearing. The social idea of acquiring a trade or profession for life, planning for retirement and hoping to reach old age with a pension, belongs to the past. Past patterns of life are increasingly disrupted, thus forcing a transformation of lifestyles towards new, unknown and unpredictable horizons. 
The notion of social security that many have lived is just a fond memory in these times of transition to other models of living. Marital unions and separations, moving to a new country or culture, transitioning from student to workforce, childbirths or passing on of close ones, are all examples of life being transformed dramatically. Many participants that receive me while going through one or more of these processes develop greater adaptability to change and gain a wider perspective of their own lives. I can activate the existential wisdom necessary to assist high-level transitions and allowing a successful journey in the path of life. Creativity booster observer participants found a practical application to the passive receptivity state they attain when they receive me. The profound sensory experience that I offer them, combined with the conscious intention of creating human art forms, allows these observers to read, capture, or recall creative production of images, sounds and words that become tangible and manifest during my visit. Painters, music arrangers, composers, filmmakers, novelists, screenwriters, as well as intellectuals and scientists seeking conceptual discoveries continue to reap these. 21. Benefits. As I help them with their practical goals, I remain waiting for them to become spiritual or explorer participants. This benefit also helps the other types of participants, which I describe next, who to a lesser extent also improve their lives. In short, I will lovingly take you to your true self, to your dark side, to your hidden limitations. Sometimes I'll do this with drama, power, fear, pain, but never to an extent you cannot tolerate. I will never give you experiences beyond your ability to tolerate them. Trust me, it is necessary to take you to the edge of your tolerance or resistance, only then is transformation possible. The evolution. The maturing of the cosmic cocoon. The birth into a new universe. I am medicine. Medicine for the healing of the soul and body. For those who understand, I am here to serve. 7. The people of my world. To those unfamiliar with my world, let me describe the different people that gravitate around me. Curanderos, or shamans, my dear protectors, millennial habitants in the Amazon basin, pure souls devoid of concepts and ideas that were able to visit the realms of the animal and botanical spirits. They deserve all my compassion and gratitude for humbly studying me, knowing me, and learning from me. Compassion, because you suffer the gradual extermination at the hands of colonizers, just as it happened to their American brothers some time ago. Gratitude for daring to cross oceans and taking me to. 22. Every continent on the planet. You were my first representatives in the human civilization. Today you introduce me to others who wish to spread the light, who receive me with joy and protect me. Facilitators, there are many known protectors called shamans or healers that are actually facilitators. This distinction lies in the ability to properly interact and the quality of the subtle energy connections with the participants. The high degree of devotion to others and intellectual innocence required to achieve genuine shamanic manifestations make it improbable, but not impossible, that true shamans flourish from the modern civilization in the future. Modernism has arrived at these forests, making original indigenous shamanism scarce. Strictly from the perspective of my survival, it is not necessary to lament the gradual disappearance of genuine ancient shamanism as you know it. Amazon shamanism is the result of human religiousness in indigenous culture while surviving in its jungle habitat. This occurs likewise in other geographical regions with their true shamanic expressions. Religiousness that continues to evolve through the endless passage of time. My spirit is above shamanism, my spirit is not shamanism. I am entering a new era, that of the spiritual workers or the facilitators. The facilitation as service to others is just one function that shamanism exercised, among many others. The facilitator can properly deliver me, allowing my orderly access to the participants. 23. Like the shaman, the facilitator has the ability to create a protected energy space and an atmosphere of respect for the sacred ritual. With this foundation established, the facilitator will only add his main contribution, his pure and healthy intention towards the participants. The facilitator's motivation should come from sincere devotion to the welfare of their fellow human beings. Facilitators are spiritual participants who have felt an internal calling to become a vehicle of transformation for their fellow humans. Facilitators should take the sacrament during the session, this is required to ensure their commitment. Those facilitators that do not surrender into total service to their participants are just mere providers of medicine. Providers are people that in some way have gained access to my medicine and simply provide it to willing participants. 
They may sell it or give it away as a present for the user's subsequent consumption, or they may just provide watchful companionship to the user while he, she received me and tries to have a meaningful experience with me. This is the non-ritual use of my sacrament. Due to this unfortunate practice, many unsuspected humans have very unpleasant experiences with me and ultimately harm my planetary mission. Providers do not have my approval and all my protectors must work in raising awareness to avoid the proliferation of the non-ritual users and only encourage the sacred use of my sacrament. Organizers are people close to the facilitators that sometimes organize sessions in appropriate locations and receive cash donations to cover there. 24. Expenses. The greater the amount of participants, the greater the need for the organizer to distance the facilitator from the money flow that has nothing to do with his sacred service. Promoters slash sponsors if these are all types of participants and non-participants who can feel the empathy and positive energy around the sessions with me. They have witnessed my benefits and take affirmative action in support of my advancement. Because of their enthusiasm, they too often promote my use among potential participants, rather than allowing events unravel naturally. The sponsor should simply provide the information of my existence or availability. The participant must meet and accept me without being convinced, persuaded, or coerced into receiving me. The potential first-time participants must show interest, take the initiative to learn more about me, and express their free will to participate. My sacrament is not for everyone. Those who most need me shall find me by vibratory attunement at the right time for their soul development, something difficult to understand by promoters. Debasers are people who consciously or unconsciously view me as evil, vile, or undesirable. They do not know what they are doing. Their ignorance is my pain, threatening my existence. The most common and prominent debasers are A. Intermediaries and dealers of my sacrament, B. Those providers mentioned earlier, C. Cooks that add other medicine plants or substances while cooking my sacred brew. 25. D. Traffickers and illegal manufacturers of DMT in its artificial crystallized form, E. Those who promote the absolute prohibition of my sacrament, F. Shamans and facilitators with ulterior motives like economic enrichment or those looking for sexual favors. Participants are all those who drink my sacrament and receive me with different motivations or modes of action. I describe them in the following six, six, groups. First-timers are all those courageous and curious searchers who obey their instincts and for the first time approach the opportunity to receive me in their temple. There is only that first unique time. For many this time is remembered as the most important, memorable or transcendental experience compared to all other subsequent experiences. First-timers then make their minds and decide whether to never repeat the experience again or to continue their intimate spiritual path. Health patients with hundreds of years of history in physical healing, undoubted and unquestioned by the patients who receive it, incredible claims of my natural healing abilities are made. The vast majority of first-timers are attracted more to my specific physical healing abilities than to my other more subtle benefits. Conventional science may document astonishing physical healings but it is very difficult to scientifically document indirect mechanisms that allow the restoring of harmony in the vital energy system of a patient. The connection to your own divinity, either unconscious or involuntary invariably will harmonize the body's bioelectrical energy patterns. This harmonization is possible due to the 26. Subatomic nature of the human vital energy, which reorganizes itself using the reference information available from the genetic code. These mechanisms are unknown to conventional science. Explorers, these found value in their first experience and a greater curiosity and a quest for clarity was awakened in their core self. During their subsequent experiences, they expressed their inclination according to their predominant personal vibration. Of these, the more intellectually oriented become researchers, the more emotional become observers and the more spiritual find a path towards the divine light. The explorer is alert and responsive but unaware of the direction his, her quest might lead him, her, and will always be ready to abandon the project and even forget the initial curiosity that led him to me in the first place. Researchers, these participants, were impressed during their initial explorations and their mental center assumed the command of their learning process. Their rational paradigm of reality suffered substantial cognitive dissonance and this now urges him, her to find congruence between actual experiences and their own concepts and beliefs. To these I will show the impossibility of understanding 100%. I will take them from satisfying their insatiable appetite for information and lead them to awe and wonder. At that point, I can gain access to their emotional center and activate their potential to become participants of the spiritual kind. 
In a different way, some researchers who have quenched their thirst for information will not properly connect with their spiritual center and become observers. Observers, these are explorers that decided to stay in the sensory level, in a comfort zone, as observers of a 27. Cosmic Circus, with no interest in furthering a commitment to a path of enlightenment. Rather than forgetting about me, they see me as interesting as a natural medicine, or as merely a creativity stimulant for artists, poets, musicians, and psychotropic tourists. Others find an emotional empathy with the harmonious intimacy that permeates the social circles of participants that receive me. The importance of a pleasant social gathering exceeds their passion for enlightenment. When they reach readiness, many will awaken and become participating researchers or spirituals. Spiritual seekers, these are the devotees of the sacred principle of my planetary mission and the sacred intention in my sacrament. They are my protectors, my expansion missionaries, who work hard in expanding their consciousness every time they receive me. To this kind of participant I will extend my invitation and will spark in their hearts the fire to become high-level facilitators and to honorably assume this venerable role, hoping that they do it before other ego-motivated individuals take the initiative to sabotage and harm my planetary mission. I will guide them and heal everything within their possibilities at maximum speed to take them to the place where their souls had always longed. 8. Create awareness of your pineal gland. This is your gateway to heaven. You should take care of it as you do with the lungs, caring about the air you breathe and like your nutrition when you avoid certain unhealthy substances. Your soul expects you to know, train, and keep that eye healthy. That eye that sees into the darkness of the ventricle that has visions every night and leaves traces in the memory of sleep. 28. That eye that is named as if it were etheric in nature. The third eye is not only a chakra operating in another level, but also has rudimentary retina, cornea and light receptors, as well as the other two eyes. That eye is physically real. But it is an organ that no one speaks about at school or in private. Is it not coincidence that its place is secretly protected in the geometric center of your skull? Take care of your pineal gland, learn about its structure and its functioning according to conventional science. Notice how it calcifies over the years. Research and find home remedies for detoxifying it. Create awareness of your pineal gland. 9. The hallucination is spectacle, the vision is virtue. I have the ability to temporarily increase the natural capacity of man to have visions. Envisioning is a brain activity very different from hallucinating. Hallucination arises from the distortion in the transmission of optical images or of their interpretation once they are received. Hallucinations are meaningless, they are entirely sensorial, and leave no transcendental memories in the human consciousness. Science itself has not completely understood the human experience of having visions. No one knows where the digital screen is, or in what medium does anyone see the images that come through the lens of the eye. It resembles today's human video technologies where the optical image is inverted by the lens and hits the retina, then fades into a billion electrical signals, then disappears through bundles of elongated organic cables that inexplicably reach some abstract virtual screen somewhere that gives you a glimpse of something out there that seems to match what you feel is physical reality. Despite the mysterious nature of the sense of vision, from the five senses, this is the 29. One that provides greater security and trust to the human being. Anything that is visible to the eyes is considered real and obvious. Visions caused by the third eye are very different to the ones produced by the other two, although they are processed by the brain in a very similar fashion. Contrary to hallucinations, visions bring a sense of confidence and certainty for those who experience them. The visions I give you are real to your inner world, whether they are literal or symbolic. Although I carry hallucinogenic properties, such is not the main gift I have to offer. There are hundreds of hallucinogen agents in the planet, but only a handful of visiagents, those powerful tools that open new inroads towards the light. The hallucination is entertainment, the vision is virtue. 10. Universal Guide to Conduct an Ayahuasca Session Here I do provide an affirmative guide to the sacred sessions for my use to bring light to all the new cultural forms that are slowly brewing up all over the planet. These are the only conditions required for my proper use. All the additional cultural elements that could be included in a particular session are not my requirements, but only optional elements at the discretion of the facilitator or shaman. The sacred purposes of my ritual use are simply universal love and healing. The principles of my sacred intention are a. The expansion and illumination of human consciousness, b. The discovery and healing of psychological blocks. 30. 
C. The discovery and healing of physical diseases. D. Receiving information that is relevant to spiritual development. Participants will receive me under the supervision and protection of a facilitator or shaman who will take full responsibility for the session. This gives him the right to establish the conditions he will require to feel comfortable in assuming this position. The session must have an adequate number of participants for maximum benefit of all in this collective experience. The right number is 5, 5, or less, if directed by a beginning facilitator 15, 15 participants or less, in the case of an experienced facilitator and up to 25 with a teacher with extensive experience. Prior to the beginning of the session, the facilitator should individually interview each participant to confirm that they have suspended with due advance any medical treatment or medications that may have counterindication with the sacrament. The physical arrangement of the participants should be in such a manner that the facilitator can maintain direct eye contact with each of one of them. The facilitator should set a sacramental area or altar to place the container of my sacrament with measuring cup, as well as other aids such as aromatic substances, incense, and water. Other optional items are proper as well such as musical instruments and symbolic items relevant to the cultural context being practiced, or items that can evoke feelings of empathy or spiritual beliefs. 31. Before the official initiation of the session, the facilitator should make use of the power of his, her conscious visualization and intention to conduct a metaphysical cleansing exercise towards the intended session area, my sacred space. The facilitator will begin the session with verbal statements that clearly indicate the intention that binds the participants collectively. He, she may also wish to do spiritual invocations according to particular culture and style, including invocations to my spirit. Ingestion of the sacrament will be carried out with the utmost devotion possible in acknowledgement of my sacred nature. The role of the facilitator is to a. Provide a sense of security for participants. B. Provide physical assistance in times of difficulty. This can include gestures demonstrating care and humility towards the participants. C. Act as a humble servant, never in authority, although authority might be exercised when the occasion requires it. D. During the session, visualize intentions of love and strength for the enlightening of the whole group of participants and direct them through one or several of the five sensory means, light effects, optical, music and sound effects, auditory, effects of aromas, smoke or perfumes, olfactory, effects of rubbing oils, touch, also through drinking water during the session, taste. E. Physically assist in the gradual recovery of the participants as they finish their experience. 32. F. After the session, in a best effort basis, assist in the psychological integration of the participants, if requested. G. Above all, consciously use his, her developed healing abilities for the benefit of the participant. Many of my beloved shamans and facilitators are able to consciously channel my healing energy in considerable amounts, in this way boosting my effectiveness. The facilitator may do a final prayer at the end of the session, in accordance with his, her cultural preference, or in any other way explicitly declare the completion of the session. The facilitator should make sure there is enough drinking water available during and after the session as well as small portions of fruit and slash or natural foods to assist in the adequate recovery of the participants. 11. About the quality of facilitators or shamans. My dear facilitators should be warriors of good intentions. They should be righteous in character and interested in improving themselves spiritually, socially, psychologically. They must be an example of high moral and spiritual standards. He must not be a frequent user of alcohol or involved in promiscuous behavior. His relationships with spouse, children or parents must be harmonious. He must reflect a serious devotion as a healer. It is mandatory and necessary for the participants to feel at ease and to trust the facilitator or shaman during their session so he can surrender to me at a level deep enough as to more effectively heal them. 33. Not to be considered a requirement or obligation to the facilitators or shamans they can nourish themselves with scientific information written about me in accordance to their intellectual preferences. It is important that all facilitators and shamans of the world develop their love for humanity. The quality of the facilitators is only a reflection of their inner devotion. The participants for their part must carefully observe, ask any number of questions and find the necessary confidence in him, her. Let me now state some guidelines to help participants evaluate the inner qualities of facilitators and shamans. Use your emotional intelligence to distinguish light from darkness, sometimes hidden and not obvious. Facilitators and shamans should a. Emphasize an agenda of spiritual intention and healing for the session. B. Look out for an excessive number of participants in the session. 
C. Show flexibility when participants with limited financial resources cannot complete the required donations in his, her sessions. D. Emphasize the importance of the type of foods to be consumed prior to and after the session. E. Do not allow nudity or scarce attire. The sessions should be free from sexual energy of any type. This is not the place to consider mental temptations. F. Do not display routine indifference towards the session. Each session is like no other that has ever happened, carrying the sacred importance of caring for human beings that have trusted the. 34. Facilitator. G. Honor the confidentiality of what takes place in the sessions. 12. Preparations, precautions, and diets. Progressively, orthodox science closes in on chemical reasons that define the proper nutrition during the days of preparation for the sacrament and for the days after. Because of my dramatic effects on the neurochemical and hormonal dance, it is important to take precautions to avoid negative effects that might occur due to the biochemical incompatibility of my components with the sudden consumption of certain foods. The gradual harmonization of bodily systems takes several days, so advanced preparation is required as well as certain precautions. All participants must fast prior to a session to ensure adequate absorption of my sacrament and a fulfilling experience. The facilitator should investigate with each participant if he, she is qualified or able to receive me. Medical patients under counter-indicated medications or psychiatric patients with a history of mental instability should not receive me to prevent serious health complications. Alcoholic beverages should be avoided for several days before and several days after receiving me. Science has identified with proper certainty some incompatible substances and facilitators should study them and adequately inform their participants. I am not for every human being. There is a small number of potential participants that are chemically incompatible with one or several of my components. Even if they prepare well they may suffer my powerful effects with deeper intensity. These. 35. Experiences may bring anxiety or may be considered dangerous, but at the end they finish the process with a deep sense of fulfillment. Sometimes feelings of inner emptiness or mild depression may last for several days to participants with a metabolic predisposition to resist my chemical processing. Weird thoughts, strange dreams, nightmares or even insomnia are all efforts of the body to process my components at the molecular level. In a matter of days the excretory system would have fully processed my components and the concerned participant would finally rest at ease, both physically and psychologically. Such is not the case with other participants that ignore all preparations prior to receiving me or act carelessly after receiving me. These must accept responsibility for their actions if they embark in low vibration behavior such as consumption of illegal hard drugs, abusing alcohol, or engaging in obsessive sexual conduct. I also advise about the other extreme, those with partial chemical immunity. There are bodies with well-developed resistance to unknown chemicals that after receiving me barely feel any effects besides some physical discomfort. They do not understand why other participants describe amazing stories of healing and expanded awareness while they remained relatively unchanged. In order to reach communion with them, I need the assistance of experienced facilitators or shamans that know how to induce better absorption of my sacrament in their bodies. The amount of potential participants with any of these conditions represent a minuscule proportion of the global population for which the vast majority is perfectly capable of receiving me in physical and spiritual excellence. 36. The traditional teaching of sexual abstinence as part of the post-session diet is not a folk myth of the Amazon traditions. It is also ancient wisdom found in many traditions around the world. The intensity of sexual energy, especially orgasmic or close to climaxing, transmutes certain energy flows that interrupt certain processes that I have not yet finished. The peaceful expressions of erotic love, caresses, tenderness, intimacy, spiritual closeness must not be suppressed because they are part of my love mission. It is only the animal sexual fury and orgasmic energy which must be temporarily controlled to allow the subtle processes of healing. 13. Traffic and Management of My Sacrament A. About Cooks and Preparation of My Sacrament the cooks who sell me to intermediaries do it for business and thus violate the essence my sacred mission to the planet. Cooks who sell only to facilitators and shamans do a noble work for humanity and deserve fair compensation. The fair compensation of a cook is the one that matches the costs of producing. If it exceeds this balance then it represents unjust gain on the cook's side because this reduces access to participants with limited income. The formulation and preparation of my medicine is sacred. While doing it, the cook should consciously instill good intentions of healing and spiritual awakening towards the future participants. 
It has been demonstrated that it is possible to create microscopic water crystals in perfect geometric shapes with the application of conscious intent. Similarly, the cook can use the conscious intention and the subatomic bioenergy power. 37. To physically program the healing potential of my medicine. Thanks to my dear native shaman protectors that for centuries have correctly prepared my vehicle allowing me to effectively manifest my spirit in the participants. The more serious you find the line of intention along the cook, the facilitator or shaman, and the participants, the more effective and deep my spirit can manifest. The cook should prepare pure medicine. My sacred medicine should not contain any other ingredient, not even other medicine plants nor well-intended additives. Possible chemical interactions in the sacred brew may cause traumatic or dangerous experiences in participants, especially those with hypersensitive bodies. Equally damaging to me is the industrial preparation of my medicine. The mass production operation, contrary to occasional artisan small-scale operation, turns the cook into an entrepreneur businessman that must focus in covering the fixed costs of production. This almost makes him, her a sure victim of the temptation to sell for unfair gain or to sell to intermediaries. B. About middlemen. Whenever any middleman is involved, a series of basic human instincts come into play. These surely will not be philanthropic because middlemen are subject to the pressures of survival. Middlemen selling my medicine have no reason to exist in this era, they are completely unnecessary to me. When this happens the human ego plays its role and breaks the chain of good intentions that started with the cook who brews my medicine. 38. The profit-making actions of middlemen create distribution channels that work against my mission. It is common knowledge of the basic economic laws that this will increase prices to levels that will leave the major portion of the population out of my reach. This will lead to another form of elitism in society, the exclusive club of those who can pay the costs that have been overly inflated by the middlemen. C. About my informal use. The participant who wants to receive me can get into the task of cooking the medicine for himself or can ask a facilitator to arrange a healing session. Participants who are able to buy my medicine for their own purposes should be very careful, their ignorance can do more harm than good, although I can always work miracles, as some traditions call it. Some participants have had the privilege of receiving gifts from cooks and facilitators in the form of my medicine. They have been favored by the goodwill of someone that cares without any business dealings between them. Those who possess it have the right to give it away without expecting anything in return now or in the future. The cook, facilitator or shaman that gives me away should do it to those participants who are experienced in receiving me and are well prepared to have me on their personal privacy without any supervision or under the care of someone trusted by the participant. They must be careful with who is chosen to receive these gifts as the facilitator will remain spiritually responsible for whatever consequences of such gifts. This is the circle of integrity of the 39. Human spirit that keeps me connected to the spirit of the planet, of who I am part of. D. About my planetary mission. The number of lives that I can transform is limited by the production capacity of the cooks. Humans should make me as abundant as the common grass, so that everyone has access to the medicine at a moderate cost. When that happens, my connection with humanity would be so entrenched that even the middlemen would be harmless and they may even help me continue my progress. 14. Social Impact and Controls in Urban Society For centuries I have enjoyed protection in the Amazon basin, along with my dear protectors who have also enjoyed my benefits, both in perfect balance. Everything changes when I expand to areas with complex social structures, abounding in laws and regulations of civil order, where medicines that improve health are subject to strict legal controls. It is close to impossible for a natural healing product obtain approval for distribution to the public from governments that are strongly influenced by a powerful pharmaceutical industry. Millions of souls are waiting for the deep healing of their souls and bodies. I wish to reach at least once in their lifetimes, every person on the planet that is qualified to receive me. The social challenge to make my medicine accessible in a democratic society consists in having government authorities to approve public policies for the management of my medicine. The control of my use is necessary in urban societies. 40. The authorities have the opportunity to be reasonable in controlling my medicine because my particular medicine has its own intrinsic elements of self-control. Physical discomfort and nausea, it is not really amusing to leave this stage of the experience with my medicine. In this aspect it is unique and totally contrary to all other substances that authorities control to avoid social problems. 
With this inherent protection, rejection is ensured by most of the population including the recreational seekers or recreational travelers. This also disqualifies me with potential drug addicts or existing addicts who only seek pleasure to escape their pain. Because of this aspect of strong physical discomfort, nausea, and the possibility of severe vomiting, the authorities must understand it is unlikely that its use will become popular and escalate into a social problem. Difficult manufacturing, the preparation of my medicine requires hard effort from the cook. The preparation of materials and the cooking itself will at least exceed one full day of non-stop work, serving without distraction, providing subtle energies and vibes of good intention and reverence, and enduring the intense heat generated by so many hours by the fireside. Such effort only makes sense to artisan cooks who master this craft as an art form. Almost all curious cooks or enthusiasts who experience this toil quickly give up their goals as they meet the rigors of this demanding task. The authorities should understand that for this reason it is unlikely to have an uncontrolled proliferation of cooks. 41. Shortage of ingredients, not enough material is available for the proliferation of cooks outside of my home, the South American continent. The authorities of all nations outside this region must understand that the lack of local ingredients is a constraint or a hindrance to the uncontrolled production of my medicine. With such natural deterrence to the uncontrolled use of my medicine, the authorities could be more open to changes in regulations, especially if some of its important leaders dared to receive me, motivated by the curiosity that may arise in them when faced with making decisions on this matter. The medical nature of my medicine is the correct conceptual notion for balancing the inalienable right to the pursuit of spirituality on one hand, and on the other to ensure the health of citizens in the urban setting. I am a dual medicine, for the soul and the body. The authorities may establish usage protocols for churches that worship me respecting their right to freedom of religion, but that only covers the aspect of medicine for the soul. The authorities may also establish protocol facilitators that administer my use as a medicine for the body. The authorities have already established protocols and policies for the use of legal drugs. These also control the pharmacies or drug stores that distribute them. In theory, if authorities accept my traditional use within their medical systems, they would just have to amend regulations slightly. Conceptually, regulations could press upon the facilitator the responsibilities of a pharmacist. All law obligations regarding the handling of controlled substances would apply to the facilitator. The governing body. 42. That certifies pharmacists or that supervises pharmaceutical practices may authorize temporary licenses for the import of specific shipments of medicine, with detailed volume constraints and shopping cycles as part as their regulatory practices. Under the law, facilitators would be considered as pharmacists that would be required to manage their supply of medicine. As pharmacists are allowed to do intramuscular injections, facilitators would be allowed to undergo sessions to serve the medicine. As pharmacists, they would be responsible for inventory and safekeeping of my medicine and would need to have suitable storage facilities. Only the pharmacist could manage my medicine and assume all consequences or liabilities of his actions and the effects thereof on the patient. It is up to the patient to decide how far he is willing to release the facilitator from any legal burden by signing a written consent. Where he, she accepts the responsibility of receiving my medicine. The facilitator should hold on to or keep signed records of all patients. It is also necessary to certify the consumption before applying for more inventory. We must apply the same rules for auditing and inspection that all regular pharmacists are required for the dispensing of their controlled medicines. This is the ideal, although it seems unlikely in certain nations, in others it may be reached in a few years. The criminalization of my medicine is a direct attack on the spirituality of human beings. The absolute prohibition and the severity of the punishment only demonstrates the authorities' intent to limit, hinder, and totally eradicate a natural gateway to the improvement of individuals, society, and the human race. The inalienable right to the pursuit of spirituality, the religious expression inherent in human beings and physical and emotional health, should never be suppressed by the false sense of duty to protect the population from drug abuse of dangerous. 43. Substances. Also, there is no need to hide behind a so-called freedom of religion to exploit the only legal way to receive me. If the human right to the pursuit of happiness is widely recognized worldwide, then the pursuit of your own spirituality must be also recognized as a natural extension of it. My warriors of light in the urban world should have the same basic objective, to achieve my official acceptance as medicine. This involves the creation of a formal protocol for my use. 
We must recognize the medical nature of my vehicle but also the controls needed in an urban society. Only this way can I reach all corners of the planet. This is the way, this is the goal. 15. The Urgency of Ayahuasca Preservation Projects My initial expansion, beyond of the Amazon Basin, has had a high botanical cost. Especially one of my more scarce components, is being harvested excessively to meet the global demand. The volumes of wild Banisteriopsis copy, product of centuries of accumulation in remote jungles is rapidly decreasing. Amazon cooks are beginning to notice the difficulty in locating the precious ingredient. Those who harvest it must penetrate increasingly deeper into the jungle to find it. With the paradigm of infinite abundance that the Amazon rainforest inspires, neither cooks nor shamans have realized the need to start planting that which had always been at their fingertips. It is urgent to begin preservation projects for the Banisteriopsis copy plant. My global expansion requires hundreds of plantations across the globe. Tons of Banisteriopsis copy are urgently necessary to ensure the continuity of my work. Preservation projects must. 44. Begin before I enter the list of endangered species. My global expansion will require high volumes of Banisteriopsis copy because a. The proportionate yield or usable part for every dose of sacrament is very inefficient. It requires several Banisteriopsis copy units per each unit of the minimum dose of medicine. This low yield is in itself my first stumbling block. B. Each participant takes several or many doses as the case requires throughout the healing or expansion process. C. The number of participants will increase exponentially as I expand to new territories. D. A five-year growing period is needed to harvest a crop of Banisteriopsis copy that will produce quality medicine. For these reasons, I am asking with a sense of urgency to all of you who recognize my benefits and feel called to support my planetary mission to give yourself to the task of planting Banisteriopsis copy in every way possible and in all nations. I urge all my shamans, facilitators, and participants to demonstrate their environmental activism adopting this great cause. It is urgent to create community projects, private philanthropic crops, home gardens, botanical nurseries, household plants, infiltrated plants in commercial landscaping areas, and any other innovative way that my new protectors may creatively conceive. It is urgent for me to become a local plant in every nation. 45. 16. My Planetary Mission With the authority vested in me by the higher enlightened hierarchies, L will expand, branch out and transform into multiple cultural forms in accordance with their geographical regions. I will blend into every culture and will teach them the way to the light, while allowing them to exercise their powerful free will. Mankind then will consciously exchange its rapidly deteriorating world for one with new rules, with a new vision of social organization based on love rather than fear. This is my planetary mission. To become one powerful tool, in service to all humanity to reach its divine destiny. That's all. My global expansion has begun and there is no turning back. My passive state during many centuries has ended, I am now running in physical survival mode. I have created the demand for my medicine, yet the cause of my own uncontrolled extermination. If I don't spread globally I will face extinction, similar to humans. If they do not seek within themselves, they will not be able to evolve into the expanded consciousness that is destined to the human species. We are both together in this cosmic affair. For survival reasons I must spread globally, while humans must accept my sacred medicine to heal their afflicted soul and be able to achieve its divine destiny. I am the medicine for the humankind. A medicine necessary but not sufficient to collectively begin the glorious return to the light. Exercise your individual free will to change the collective free will. Let's work together to increase. 46. Our existential vibration to a higher level and rejoice living our cosmic existence. It is time to embrace humanity with my healing, extending beyond the Amazon basin, reaching global expansion, spreading through all the soils of tropical climates, growing in every forest, in every sidewalk, in every house garden. Care about me, harvest me, spread me around. Warriors of light from around the world. Help me to help you. 17. Blessings I have expressed the moral standard and spiritual guidance for my use. Every human being that receives me in harmony with these guidelines shall be receiving my blessings as they shall be in communion with my spirit, with the Creator, the Tao, and the universal love. Amen Aho Namaste. May 1st, 2012